Hi, I'm Jack Nicholas, and this is my U.S. Open. Through the years, I've learned to enjoy the last few holes of a tournament. Quite often, I'll go up on the 14th, 15th hole, and I'll all of a sudden just stop, take a deep breath, look around me, look at the excitement of the people, look at how much fun they're having. And then I say, you know, this is why I'm here. This is what it's all about. This is why I do what I'm doing. Golf's a game. It's supposed to be fun. Sure, you say you got a lot of pressure. That's what you play for. That's what you practice for. That's what you want. Pebble Beach, as a golf course, really without wind is not that difficult. It's a really great golf course, but it's not all that difficult. You can shoot 65, 6, 7 out there fairly easily if you play reasonable under good conditions. But when the conditions get tough, Pebble Beach can be a monster. I won the amateur there in 61. The conditions were totally different than what I'd won in the Crosby in 72. Pebble Beach in January or February is entirely different than Pebble Beach in June. You're wet in, in the wintertime, it's cold, the greens are really slow and bumpy and soft. In June, they're starting to dry out, you're starting to get fast conditions, you get much windier conditions. Just a totally different golf course. The beauty is the same, but the golf is totally different. The worst thing to do at a U.S. Open is to get off of the mediocre, bad first round because it's hard to pick up strokes in the U.S. Open. Par is a good score, and one under par is a good score. A superb blast. Jack Nicklaus, part 18 for a 73, and a 36-hole score of 144, still tied for the lead. I thought we'd shoot a little lower than that, but uh, uh, if you're tied for the lead, and it doesn't really make any difference whether it's even par, 10 under par, or 10 over par, you're tied for the lead. Anytime I'm playing any golf tournament, I know who's on the leaderboard. I mean, I'm only really worried about myself, because that's the only person I can control. But I loved having Palmer or Trevino or whoever it might be there, because they were all good players, and any one of them could make three or four birdies right, just boom, like that. And all of a sudden, whoa, whoa, look what happened. But all I had to do was go out and do what Jack Nicklaus needed to do. Sunday, the last day. Winds are frightful, up to 30 miles an hour velocity. They dried out the greens. Six through nine is always pretty much a key at Pebble Beach. You should be even or one under around that point. And if you start letting the game get away from you at six, seven, eight, nine, then the rest of the round's tough. Here's the man they call the Golden Bear. That will be for his par five. All right, Jack Nicholas. Sole possession of the lead at one over par. It's on this way with the little punch. It's left to the pin. Now I've got probably, I don't know, 25-foot putt that probably would normally break probably about, oh, six inches. Probably with this wind, maybe break maybe a foot and a half or more. And I made it. How about that? That's pretty good. That was a good one to hold. Jack has played very steady. He's parred this hole all three rounds. Jack has admitted that this is the course that really requires thinking. Up he comes. It's on the green. All high, but to the left, that's the green right. made it. He's playing with much more confidence since that birdie on seven. Walking off a of nine green, I was in pretty good position. And then I gave it back a lot of what I really earned through those four holes. Well, the 10th fairway slopes very sharply from left to right. And the wind coming into your face a little bit left to right, which it does, sweeps the ball across the fairway. And if you don't hit it really solid, 
ball would get moving right, and then it just keeps right on going. It was right off the cliff, which is what my ball did. Now Jack is really in trouble. He was four strokes ahead of Trevino and Palmer after nine, but he's pushed his tee shot on 10 onto the beach. And then when you drop it, you drop into the rough, and now you got a tough shot. Did that go down? Really hit the ball a little bit too far right, put me down in that sort of shelf short of the 10th screen, and I just hacked it out. Well, got it up. Now lies four. Look how slow that putt was into the wind. Didn't play a great tee shot, didn't play a great third shot after I dropped it. Didn't play a great fourth shot, and didn't play a great putt. It was double bogey. But that's where guys get themselves in trouble. All of a sudden, you start to make a mistake, and then they turn around and say, gosh, I'm just giving it away. Everybody else is going through exactly the same thing. So you make the best of what you've got. Instead of having a four-shot lead, I have a two-shot lead. I just know i got to stay at work. I can't be getting lazy. I can't get sloppy. I've got to play coming in. Tough greed. Tough hold to hit the ball on. And I had a really good shot there. But the ball hit on the green and just, it's like hit landing on a, on a rock. But it is long, and look at that. We do. The ball just, phew, off it went. That's his third shot. Didn't pitch it back on, but I made it a really nice putt for, to save bogey. It's in. That was probably the key to the golf tournament, as it turned out. Because if I miss that putt and Arnold makes his pretty putt, we're even, and he's already gotten by. 13 and 14, so I had those to play, and they were not easy. So, you know, that was, that was a big putt. Looks like he's got about an eight iron there. And there's my iron shot. And look at that one, about 12 feet I would. Which I think I'll take. And it goes in. That's a, that's a good reaction to saying, thank goodness. It's always good to put a birdie on the board in the last four or five holes of a U.S. Open, I promise you. I wanted par 17 if I possibly could, because that kept a three-shot lead. And I could play 18 pretty much like I wanted to. At 17, double bullet can come at 17 pretty quickly. With the pit on the right side of the left section, that meant if you hit any place right, it's bogey. Now I had the wind in my face, and I really almost needed three wood to get there. But I wasn't going to hit three wood. I wasn't going to put the ball in the air to give itself a chance. So I hit the one iron. As I took the club back that time, I took it a little bit inside. Didn't mean to. I felt it, and I hung on a little bit longer through the ball. And my timing was so good that week, I could do that. And I flushed the ball. Almost made a hole in one, Chris. That's the most remarkable shot, I think, of the entire championship right there. It's actually one of the shots that I've played in my whole career that I was probably the most proud of. I mean, I, I knew what my situation was. I knew what I had to do. I made a slight mistake taking it back. I realized it. I adjusted to it. And I hit the shot just flush and put the ball, obviously, even better than I thought I could play. This gives Jack a four-stroke lead with only the 18th to play. I love Pebble. A place I played a lot of golf. A place I enjoyed. A place I loved. What a feeling, leading by four with one hole to play. If I have one round of golf to play, I've always said I'd want to go back and play at Pebble Beach. That is the third Open Championship, the 13th major, Jack Nicklaus has won it two over par or 290.
there at Pebble Beach. The U.S. Open has always been the most important tournament in golf to me. I'm an American. Uh, it's a championship in my country. And to me, that's got to be the most important championship in the world for an American. And I'm proud to be an American, and I'm proud to be able to have won the U.S. Open four times.